Zidane Danny, Electro Ninja here, and welcome back to Electro Ninja's Lab. You might recall, if you follow me on Twitter, that I recently posted a little question, specifically to uh, Thomas Ostruck, basically asking the question if he could make sure, if he could re release the entire New York special with everything that they were unfortunately forced to cut out. Would he? Now, obviously, he hasn't answered that question, but today I'm going to answer why he should and why the team should actually focus on getting the rest of the stuff that they had to unfortunately cut and put it into the actual special for its Blu-ray release or uh, its re-release on Netflix or Disney Plus or wherever else it's going to be going. The simple fact of the matter is the reason that they were unfortunately forced to cut a lot of content is because of the fact that this was going to be a TV movie, not actually a actual movie in theaters, but instead something that they only had an hour to actually show everything, which unfortunately really sucks. But at the same time, we need to ask the question, why'd they cut so much content? A lot of people have noticed two things specifically that were clearly cut. The first thing is the love story between um, Sabrina and the American boy, which honestly, they really should have named him. I'm just going to say it. They really should have. Unfortunately, they didn't. So, there's that. But the other thing is that there was also clearly a story going on for Miss Mendeloof. The fact of the matter is that they clearly wanted to do something with the fact that she's, unfortunately, not... She's kind of being seen as not the best teacher. Which is honestly odd, to say the least. Certain people actually do really like Miss Mendeloof, but for some reason, they despised her for this special. Honestly, it's a bit odd. So I really think they should have gone more in depth with that. The same, uh, And people have actually asked Thomas Ostruck about these two specific things, and he actually did confirm that they were originally going to be in there. Unfortunately, they had to cut it for time. But I think there might have been a few other things that were actually intended to be in there that unfortunately were just cut for time. Something specifically is more references to the, New York, uh, to the comic. The fact of the matter is that there were ton of opportunities that they could have actually taken to explain what happened in Trash Kraken. Obviously, they're not necessarily going to actually reveal everything, but it honestly would have made a lot more sense if they had actually decided to talk about that stuff. Unfortunately, they didn't, which leads me to wonder why. Why exactly are they choosing not to talk about all of these things? I've been made a video already where I showed that yes, the New York uh, the comic did happen, but at the same time, I had to go to some extreme lengths to actually talk about that, and all of it was from one character. I honestly think that they could have done a lot more with that, but for some reason. They didn't. It's honestly a weird situation, to say the least. Who knows why the heck they would have done all of these things, but they did. I also felt like there was an extreme lack of characterization for certain characters. I mean, 
while they did actually get to do a lot, uh, a decent amount of stuff for Uncanny and Sparrow, they didn't really get a chance to do much with Majestia and uh, Night Owl. Both of them had almost no real characterization aside from a few brief moments where they were in their normal identities or when they were on screen compared to a lot of other characters, which is honestly a bit weird considering how important they are to the actual show. I mean, honestly, I was expecting them to have a lot more, especially considering the fact that Nino got a lot of characterization in the comic. So I was really specifically, I was expecting more from Majestia just because of the fact that, well, her sister, her evil sister is eventually going to show up in the series. So why not more information about that? And also there could have been some really good moments to actually talk about again, trash Kraken. But more specifically, what happened in that with the uh, black goo? Majestia is cur was is supposedly currently looking into the information about it, but they don't bring that up at all. That honestly felt a bit weird. A lot of other things also felt rushed, just in general, uh, such as when they were concluding the actual show. Uh, they, it really felt like they were trying to get through the entire special as quick, uh, through the ending as quickly as possible because the story was done and this and that. But the fact of the matter is that most of the time, the stuff after the actual villain is defeated is some of the most important stuff for Miraculous. A lot of the different characters have a lot of important things to say most of the time for most of the episodes. Yes, there are some where it ends pretty abruptly, but the majority of those are ones that are multi-parters. So the fact that they decided to cut so much honestly felt weird. I really do think that they should have done a little bit on the more with the discussion between Marinette and Alia about her feelings towards Adrian and whether or not she was actually going to tell him. For sure, I know that there is going to be a pretty high probability that Marinette is going to have to tell Adrian, but I honestly don't know for sure. The main reason that I bring all of this up is because of the fact that the New York special felt unfinished in general. I mean, if you actually look at the New York special in comparison to a lot of the other specials or the, a lot of the other episodes, if you look actually at the mouths, the mouth flapping, a lot of the other shows, or a lot of the episodes, they actually match the mouths pretty well, comparatively. Meanwhile, in this, there was so much that just didn't quite fit right. Mostly because of the fact that they were often speaking French. And if you look closely, you can actually tell that they are, that their mouth flaps are actually synced to the French rather than the English. Now, for sure, there are moments where it does look like they are actually speaking English, but a good portion of them weren't. This is mostly due to the fact that I think that the special wasn't actually as well planned. They couldn't actually get a lot of the people in to actually make sure that the mouth flaps were synced to whatever languages it was. While they were able to do some of it, they missed certain parts, and they were just rushed to get it out. Meaning that things 
felt like it fell short, which isn't the best situation to be in. <sighs> Unfortunately, we're not going to be able to actually tell, but yeah, should they remake the special? Honestly, I think they should. Should they completely redo everything? No, I'm not saying that. But I've mentioned before that certain character designs leave stuff to... Leave something that needs desiring. Uh, such as Majestia. I'm sorry, but Majestia just looks so awful in this version. But we'll see. I doubt that they're actually going to change Majestia if they're going to redo every... If they're going to redo things. Basically, what I... Here's what I actually expect them to do if they are going to remake things and re-release it. One, I expect them to actually fix the mouth flaps for each language that it's going to. Obviously, first things first is get everything else ready for the actual show and uh, for the Shanghai special. Those will probably be coming first. But if they are going to re-release it, they're going to probably fix the mouth flaps to make sure that everything syncs up to the correct language. Then they are also going to be adding some scenes that honestly, a lot of people were really wanting. Uh, like I said, the um, two specific scenes are absolutely going to need to be changed and, add, uh, and added. Basically stuff about um, uh, Sabrina and the American boy. We should find out what his name is, just saying. And also, we should have some more stuff about Miss Mendeloof because of the fact that she just... She felt like she wasn't developed as much as she should have been for this special. Especially because it really did feel like they were actually prepping for more stuff for that. Um, and again, put if they are going to do anything near the end add a little bit more back there to basically make it seem a little bit better of a wrap-up um add more stuff uh, more characterization for all the characters and maybe make adrian realize oh yeah i should probably uh stop being such a jerk and actually tell marinette that i am in love with ladybug and then the identity reveal please something but We'll see. It's just going to have to wait. But hopefully this has explained my thoughts. And hopefully you guys are excited to see what is in store for the next, well, chapter. The Shanghai Special. I, for one, am really excited about it. And I hope that you guys are as well. But anyways, guys, let me know your thoughts and theories down in the comments below. If you are going to leave it there, make sure to say theory review somewhere in your comment. And of course, if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, subscribe if you're new, and ring that notification bell. And if you want to support the channel even more, then definitely head down to the description and check out all of our links down there, including all of our social medias and ways that you can support us financially, including our Patreon, which a big thank you to our current patron, Sheenie. But anyways, guys, I've been Electro Ninja, and I will see you guys next time. But on!